Hey everyone, thank y'all for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update for Tuesday, July 12th. Um, we've got Jason on the phone, so I'm going to go ahead and let him kick us off with his Northeast update and anything else that he has for us. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Uh, hot is the word for the week. I, I would assume that uh, that you'll hear that resounding message from Lee and Vance as well. It has been unrelenting this past week, uh, just in terms of daytime temperatures and humidity. Uh, it's, it's definitely been pretty rough. Uh, and I don't know that we got a whole lot of field reports to do other than, other than that hot, dry, um, and it doesn't take very long whenever you get this kind of heat and humidity to just have to moisture out of the ground and these pastures and hay fields start showing it pretty quick. Uh, they, they look good one day and then it seems like 24 hours later, it looks like they got their nose drove in the dirt, but, um, and I'm sure Lee and Vince will resound some of that of what they're seeing across the state as well. I guess one thing I wanted to touch on just real fast is, uh, whenever we do start getting into this kind of heat and humidity, a lot of things we, uh, we'll neglect to pay attention to that we need to is um, water sources. Uh, a lot of these little stock ponds are drying up, uh, just have not had the rainfall to keep those recharged. Uh, just make sure that uh, that those cattle do have an adequate source of, of some good fresh water. Uh, check your tanks, check your floats, make sure your floats are working right. Um, we all know that cattle are going to drink uh, more water that's kind of cool in nature than they are hot water. Uh, I know that's kind of a hard ask whenever you're watering out of stock ponds like that, but the best that we can do is just make sure that number one, that they do have a source of, of good, fresh, clean water. And if we are watering out of um, tanks that are operated on a float, make sure those tanks, uh, those floats are, are functioning properly and those tanks have got water in them. Um, looking at our markets for the weekend, July 8th, so naturally we did have a holiday fall uh, this week, so a lot of our livestock markets were closed, and uh, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on that in just a minute. Uh, looking at the slaughter for this past week, it was at 593,000 head. That's 13,000 over the prior year with most plants, uh, of course, being shut down for the 4th of July holiday. Uh, retailers are purchasing some midsummer needs. Um, and the, I guess the biggest surprise for this week was the cutout, uh, choice cutout value. It posted gains this past week instead of uh, declines, which is normally what we see directly after the 4th of July, July holiday. We start seeing those choice box beef cutout values start declining um, uh, just over time as we go into the fall of the year. But we saw gains this year for some reason. Um, choice box feed closed the week at $267.17 a hundred. That's up a dollar forty-seven compared to the previous week with a choice select spread of twenty-five dollars and thirty-six cents. So that's up a dollar seventy-four from the previous week and eleven dollars and sixteen cents higher if you compare that to the five-year average from the same week. So that kind of gives you an idea of of, uh, of where that choice select spread normally is sitting at this time of year based on the five-year average. As reported in the National Weekly Direct Slaughter Cattle Negotiated Purchase Report, uh, they had a confirmed 71,515 head in that report. For the week in the Texas Panhandle, live purchases traded steady to a dollar lower at 137. For the week in Kansas, live purchases traded a dollar lower from a dollar 37 to a dollar 40. And for the week in Nebraska, uh, live purchases traded a dollar to two dollars lower from 144 to 149. Uh, live cattle futures market settlements in the front months ended the week with August down 60 cents at 133.95, October down 90 cents at 138.95, and December down 40 cents at 145.07. When we compare that week closure with the week open, uh, those live cattle futures did remain steady. So again, we did not have any uh, uh, livestock markets to report um, this week for five to 600 pounds, seven to 800 pounds. So Dr. Edwards, I'm cheating just a touch. So I know this is for the weekend, July 8th, but just to kind of give you an idea of where we're opening up at. So I peaked at the OKC report, uh, the first report coming out today for their feeder cattle, feeder cattle sale. And it looks like on well-tested, 
uh, numbers, five to 600 pounds, medium and large ones to two are coming in at 162 to 180. And seven to 800 pound medium and large ones and twos also well tested or 164 to 168. So uh, it looks like uh, uh, those buyers are there and they're uh, they're still looking for those, some of those uh, some of those cattle um, with prices like that. That's, that's still holding pretty decent uh, in terms of some feeder cattle values. Uh, and in terms of our futures markets for those uh, those feeder cattle in the front months. August trading down 75 cents at 171.72, September down a dollar 32 at 174.72, and October down a dollar 57 at 177.75. So on those feeder cattle futures, they ended the week mostly a dollar lower compared to the week open. So we don't have any uh, uh, coal cow values to to report to you this go round. So. Uh, we'll have some pretty solid numbers the next time we visit again. But looking at our feedstuffs, soybean meal up $25.20 at $517.40 a ton. Soybean hull steady at $155 a ton. Cottonseed meal steady at $365 a ton. Whole cotton seed down $25 at $435 a ton. Corn gluten feed, the 60% product is down $10 at $745 a ton. And corn is down 36 cents a bushel at $6.34 a bushel. For this go round, we did not have any reports on dry distiller's grain or rice bran at this time. With that, Ashley, I'll turn it back over to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, do you want to go ahead and put, I, don't, I know it's a couple of months out, but do you want to give, um, the field day on their radar, put the field day on their radar. Do you have that date in front of you? Yes, ma'am. September the 15th, J&S cattle, that'll be north of Bastrop. Um, we, uh, we're finalizing the uh, the agenda now. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, a couple of private industry talks and some extension talks to try and something a little bit different this go round in terms of uh, trying to do a little bit of mix of some private industry and some extension talks. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see how the how the folks respond to that. See if we want to continue doing it that way. But we're looking forward to it. Uh, new venue this year, so we've been at Goldmine the last six or seven years. Uh, we had an opportunity to move up to J and S Cattle, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity. Thank you, sir. I'm excited about those uh, industry talks, although. You know, I want I want my talks to be awesome every year, but I think the the couple guys that we are hopefully getting in from the industry, those are going to be really cool, and I think that we're going to have some good feedback on those. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Vince, I will go ahead and turn it over to you for our update, our update for Central to South. Sure, thank y'all for having me. And uh, yeah, it goes without saying. You know, kudos to what Jason said. It's hot. Uh, fortunately, we've been getting a, f a few showers. I guess you'd call it some sea breeze showers coming in off the coast. Um, the last couple of afternoons uh, gets pretty windy, and we had actually two rains at my place yesterday morning and yesterday afternoon. So I uh, got about a quarter of an inch. So cool things down and gave us a little rain, but that's been the case in, in most areas. But we're still seeing a lot of our, our crop area struggle uh, along with our pastures and, and hay fields are just not not productive as as we need them to be this time of the year and uh the, the same story goes uh if you hadn't got your hay locked in uh with if you're buying hay from someone um you better prepay something because it's going to be short moving forward um you know as jason mentioned the markets were closed uh, and it's really not moving not a lot of movement right now on anything going to the stockyards here locally it's just been so hot and Cattle are gathered in the shade at 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning and pretty much hanging out there all day uh, waiting for, for a break and even as late as 7 to 8 o'clock in the evening to go out and graze. So uh, it's, it's been pretty challenging. Naturally, our humidity here is is a little bit heavier than what you all experienced up in the north. And we were down uh, south of Lake Charles in the sulfur area over the weekend for our cattle show. And we had some people from out of state and, and north, uh, and they were just struggling with this humidity in our air. So um it, it was a sure enough challenge for those guys and, and us as well so uh with that being said that's that's about about all i have i just want to remind it if anybody's watching uh friday the 15th is going to be our final day to 
sign up for our master cattleman program that will take place at the Rose Pine, the old Rose Pine Research Station, which is the Boulevard Parish Extension Office now. Um, so if you if you have an, an interest in doing that, it's time to get it in the mail. Um, but you know, just just some follow up things as Jason mentioned. You know, bulls are, are probably uh, more critical now. Some people, most people, have taken their bulls off right now, but when they get hot, it's harder for them to cool off. So keep them keep them in the shade. Keep them where you can see them. Uh, keep them where they can get some help if you need to give them help. Uh, horn flies continue to have good populations in our area. Uh, back rubs and a lot of people put tags and maybe do a deworming in, in July here. Uh, but you need to get that done early in the morning because it gets awfully hot, awfully quick. So um, that's about all I have in this area. Uh, you know, still lackluster on, on hay supplies and. Uh, we we need it. We need some good rain to set in with this tropical weather sitting along the coast. Uh, maybe later on this week we'll see some better rain chances. Thank you, sir. Um, and since you mentioned some of the bulls and taking bulls out, just a reminder on pregnancy determination too. Um, another thing, get it done early in the morning. We were doing some ultrasounding and back in what was that mid June, I think, um, to check on AI pregnancies and. It's I've gotten too spoiled to the office. It was even getting kind of warm for me uh, once we started getting on into the morning. So um, just adding adding that to the, uh, to your list of things to think about as well. Lee, I'll turn it over to you for our Northwest region. Thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with you all today. I don't know what these folks are talking about in Northwest Louisiana. It's a nice and cool uh, 60 degrees, wore a light jacket this morning, sorting some calves. So I, I don't know what they're driving at uh, the other folks on this call. But I, I am just kidding. It, it it is hot. My goodness, it's hot. Um, humid also. The humidity, of course. If you're listening to this, you're probably in Louisiana, and you know that's what really gets us. While we may not experience the uh, humidity levels that uh, the Vince gets down down his way, they they have been fairly oppressive. Um, I, I I I like to kind of study weather records a little bit, and I I, I like to see the the records as far as for daily high and daily low temperatures and everything so if y'all indulge me this minute uh about a couple of days ago i think it was due not july the 9th we set an all-time uh high in shreveport at the national weather service uh 105 uh record's been kept since 1874 or 1884 something like that it's hot uh, it doesn't matter once you cross that uh, 100 degree mark you you know it, it hot's the only word to describe it um we've had a, a some some limited rainfall uh, and I, I would even go so far as uh, not call it limited but maybe widespread rainfall across portions of northwest louisiana uh going back to around the fourth around independence day some folks uh were, were blessed with some pretty substantial rains we were talking before we got on this call vince and i were visiting on this and and um um some folks it, it just depends on where you were at some folks had upwards of three inches of rain and it was one of those good rains y'all know the type i'm talking about where it falls slowly and takes uh takes a day or day and a half to accumulate to that much but so it, it definitely did change the the outlook of things for a few days there but once again we pop right back up into those record high temperatures and as jason stated uh it it it, it unless you get some moderation in temperatures or continued rounds of rain it just doesn't it, it doesn't translate to much in this grass uh it, it it just it it takes on kind of a bluish hue and then you'll know that it's it's leaving you pretty quick whenever it turns colors that way um but we, we uh, don't don't let me negate what I'm saying. We we're very appreciative of, of of the rainfall we got. Not everybody shared in that rainfall, though. Folks right along uh, farthest portions of, of of my region there in the northwest region, uh, the Soda Parish Way, uh, some of Sabine, they, they they didn't get quite the quite the rainfall that others that others throughout the region got. Pasture conditions, uh, they're in pretty good shape for the shape they're in, I guess would be the way to put it. Uh, hadn't heard of a lot of people uh, making movements on, on cows as far as off of, off of pastures because they're droughted out. 
uh, but then once again, uh, the, the, these uh, local auction markets have been so, uh, shut down uh, for 4th of July as well. So uh, going to be interesting to see what, what happens this week. These sales get kind of kicked back off. Uh, hay production just, I wouldn't say it's come to a grinding halt because I've talked to several folks that have still been cleaning up some fields on some second cutting stuff. Uh, saw saw one uh, uh, a friend of, of ours that uh, sent me a picture of some sorghum Sudan he's got, and he's caught a few rains here and about, and he had some up to uh, almost to the top of the tractor cab. He had let it get a little mature, I guess, uh, but he he had, he had received some some pretty fortunate rains there. Uh, so there's still folks baling hay, but for the most part, a lot of folks are waiting on some moisture. Um, I tell you, with, with the with these cuttings of hay, it'll kind of make you study your lesson. Whenever uh, in times past, when diesel fuel was a little cheaper, you know, you would go up and go out and clean up a field and scrap together a cutting. But when you're faced with the 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 potential for four fifty to five dollar a gallon diesel. Uh, it, it makes you want to want to think whether or not you need to wait and gamble on another rain or or if you want to truly go out there and scrap together bail bail and half to the acre whatever whatever's there so it just kind of changes the, the dynamics and decision makings when it comes to hay production cattle working is just almost non-existent unless you're pinning some to sell or if it's an emergency get some sick cattle or something that needs to be addressed and so if, if you are pinning cattle, most folks trying to trying to get out there and hit them uh, 536 o'clock in the morning with gold being done as quick as possible after that, because as being stated, these cattle are brushing up, shading up, getting in a pond by, you know, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock around here with these conditions uh, uh, being what they what they have been. Um, you know, most of these, as we stated, I think Jason Mann being stated, now I just alluded to these sale barns being shut down for the, July the 4th. The one standout, I guess, is, uh, and it's not in Louisiana, but it is kind of borders our, our region over here in Northwest Louisiana. Longview Livestock uh, sold cattle across the border there in Texas last week on Thursday, I believe it was, and, and prices were, were, were fairly decent uh showed a market increase uh week after week right across the, the line there that's not too far from Shreveport so uh it's going to be real interesting to see what happens with some of these local auction markets as we uh as we move forward um uh, in into this week and finally I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up uh with this Ashley uh, you know th this social media is a wonderful thing uh, and it, it can be a, uh, as much of a curse it is, as it is a blessing too, but it has the unique ability to raise awareness of, of situations and what's going on. And I think us in the cattle business are, are kind of seeing some instances of that. Remember back, we're not going to hash over the old, old business by any, any stretch of imagination, but remember back about a month ago, that video of the feed yards that lost all the cattle made its rounds around and everybody was seeing it. And there were a lot of people talking uh, that were outside of the cattle world that were talking about that video. And and there is another one making its rounds and it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of a different flavor, I guess. Uh, over at Emory, Texas, at the Emory Livestock Commission Company over there, uh, which Emory is only uh, about 130 miles from Shreveport. So it's, it's, it, it's kind of in our back door, I guess you would say, just a couple of hours west of us. Uh, somebody recorded a video this past Saturday. They they have a Saturday and either a Monday or Tuesday sale. Uh, somebody recorded a video of, of uh, trucks and trailers on the highway trying to get off the highway to get unloaded at that barn for their Saturday sale. And my goodness gracious, I, it's a minute and a half, two minute video uh someone took from the uh from the windshield of their car driving down this highway uh of trucks and trailers of any 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 size and and configuration waiting in line to get unloaded uh they ran 3400 head through a little little over 3400 head on saturday 
I've heard estimates that their normal handle for a, a, a sale this time of the year would be anywhere from 1,700 to 2,000 head. So it, it is an uptick, but what this video has done on, on social media is raised awareness for the cause of, of uh, those of us in the cattle business. And uh, as dry as we are here in Louisiana, it doesn't hold a candle to what's going on in that north, uh, central to central, even in the south Texas area. My goodness, they're dry. The pictures you see are just heartbreaking. And so, you know, you, you just kind of feel sorry for these folks that are making, that are being forced into these marketing decisions uh, uh, right now. But I, I'm just going to wrap it up by saying this, that if you uh, uh, take advantage of these social media videos, if you will, it gives us a chance to tell our story. Uh, through these videos, it raises awareness, and I think more has been done to spread the word of how dry it is in Texas and the high input costs, high feed costs, uh, limited to no hay availability. Uh, it, it's done more to spread the awareness of the ranchers in Texas, uh, their calls and, and the plight that they're in, just by that simple video of all those cow trucks waiting to get unloaded. With that being said, Ashley, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, sir. And to echo what he said, I know I've said this on here before. Most of y'all know I'm from Central Texas. And so we were back home for me uh, last week of June. And you can tell it just progressively gets worse the the further west that you start to drive and um, start to drive, excuse me. And it is it's it's heartbreaking to see to see how it is there. So. Hopefully we'll get some rain. It started raining on us when we were driving back to Farmerville on July 2nd, but it hit us in East Texas, but mostly mostly here in Louisiana. So uh, we have to count our blessings for whatever rain it is that we do get. Um, to touch on some events that we have coming up, we got to check my notes. So when this goes out today on July 12th, um, I'll be doing our beef French webinar for the month. I'm going to go over a little bit of commercial heifer, um, commercial replacement heifer selection and development. Um, if you get hear this before 1030, we are live at 1030. You can go to the Beef Brunch website, which I'll have posted um, in the descriptions for this video and podcast. If you miss it, we'll get it up on our website and on the YouTube channel, um, hopefully by the end of this week. On Friday, July 22nd, uh, we have a Marketing Your Beef workshop. And so this workshop is geared specifically to marketing beef or selling beef directly to consumers. Um, so we're offering it two different ways. Um, we hope that you would attend in person at the state evacuation shelter. Um, we are asking for pre-registration for this, and I'll have that link in the video and podcast description. Uh, you would get there, sign in about 830. The event's going to start at nine o'clock. Uh, we have people coming in to talk about the processing, you know, harvesting, processing, breakdown of a carcass. We'll talk a little bit about how to manage and finish cattle. Uh, laws and regulations of selling beef here in the state. Uh, we have a producer panel coming in talking about how they got started selling beef um, and kind of what they do there and several other different things, uh, quality and yield grades and things like that. The event is being sponsored by Louisiana Beef Industry Council, so it is a free event. They are sponsoring the lunch for this. Um, if you're able to come in person, we are also offering it virtually, um, and so I'm you again have to pre-register and I'll get you that link on how to register or how to attend virtually for that. Um, if you have any questions on it, you can reach out to me. Um, my contact information again, also in the video and podcast descriptions, I'm asking that you register by July 18th, but the sooner you can get it on there, the better, uh, just in terms of me being able to get all the lunches and everything together for that. Vince mentioned the Master Cattleman classes. He mentioned his, um, so sign up is by Friday the 15th for the Central Region one. We also have uh, Dr. Donna Gentry is getting ready for the Southeast Region, so that's going to be in St. Francisville there at the West Feliciana office. Hers is going to run September 1st through November 3rd. It's going to be from 5.30 to 8.30 um, p.m. in those evenings, so one night a week. She's limited to 25 participants and August 15th is a deadline for that. So I'll have the links for both of those. Um, you can go onto our website. You can look inside of a little table and you'll be able to click on the registration forms and flyers for those respective classes. And then the last thing to put on your radar, 
um, is a virtual event. So we are doing the Dean Lee Research Station and Extension Center virtual field day again this year. We are going to launch that on August 10th. Um, so it's a virtual event. So you'll just be able to go on to YouTube and see all those videos. Um, and we'll get those links for you once those are out. But just realize that we are going to have those videos coming in August. We have a couple of cattle videos, a couple of forage management videos. There's going to be horticulture and agronomy. It's going to be a whole mix of everything for that field day. Uh, with that, I think that's all that we have for y'all this week. Uh, we will see y'all again in a couple of weeks. If you have questions on any of those, feel free to reach out to us.